I'm just gonna put this out there. July was probably the best reading month I've ever had in my entire life. Hi everyone, my name is Emily and today I'm gonna be doing my July wrap up and August TBR. I did my book haul separately for July just because there were a lot in there. So I didn't really want to have this video be so long. So that's why this video is separate this month. Hopefully next month, I won't have a book haul, but we'll see. I switched over to Storygraph so you guys can see all my stats and stuff now. So I will no longer be using Goodreads, but I will still have the link in my description in case you do want to check it out. But pretty much all the same data is on my Storygraph. I was contemplating going back and changing all of my ratings for all these books just so I could have the half stars and stuff, but I'm too lazy, so I'm not gonna do that. My average rating is 4.18. I genuinely, genuinely loved all of the books or most of the books that I read this month. So first off is Paris is Always a Good Idea by, I don't even remember her name, Jen McKinley, I think. Um, I ended up DNFing this book and I returned it back to Amazon, so I don't have it. The plot was just way too predictable. I knew what was gonna happen like 50 pages in, um, so I just didn't feel the need to spend all my time on it. And I got my money back, so. The next book I read was The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. I really enjoyed this book. It wasn't my favorite Agatha Christie book so far. Her books haven't been wowing me as much as they used to, or maybe it's just the ones that I've been picking out. Um, I did really enjoy it though. It had me intrigued the whole time. I think I rated this one four stars. I rated this one four stars. I did enjoy it, but it didn't wow me as much as her other stuff did, so that's why I docked off a star. The next book I read was The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. I really liked this one, surprisingly. There were a couple of plot holes in this book that kind of confused me, so that's why I took off a star. I didn't see the ending coming, so that's a good thing, I guess. I like it when I don't see the ending coming and then I just get bewildered. The next book that I read was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I didn't like this one. I'm sorry, everyone loves this book, but it was this was literally the slowest book I've ever read in my entire life. I was gonna rate it two stars, but then the ending was phenomenal, so I gave it a three. Like the last 50 pages are probably my favorite part of the entire book, so just getting through the first part was so boring i'm sorry i did listen to this one on audiobook um and so and usually when i read audiobooks it helps me enjoy the book a little more but this one i was just i was just bored um and i thought i was the only one who felt this way until i started talking about it in my book club discord and a lot of people felt the same as i did so i didn't feel alone on that the next book the next book i read was blackout by danielle clayton tiffany d jackson nick stone angie thomas ashley woodbook and nicola yoon I finally said all of their names together in the first try, but this is now one of my favorite books. I loved it so much. It gave me very much Nicola Yoon vibes. I love how all of the stories came together at the end and they were all cohesive and unified even though they were all about different people and I loved how there were connections in between all of them. It was just so lovely. All of these love stories were so adorable and cute. I even tabbed it. I read this during my 24 hour readathon. Loved it. Five out of five stars. The next book I also read during that 24 hour readathon and it's in Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I enjoyed this one a decent amount. I think I gave this one 4.5. Yes, I did. Um, I didn't see the ending coming. It was insane. Agatha Christie is such a good mystery writer. I would have never guessed that that was going to happen. Um, but this one basically follows a bunch of people who go onto an island and then slowly, one by one, they all die. And they're trying to figure out who the killer is. It's one of the 10 people that were on the island. This one was really good. I listened to it on audiobook. I highly recommend reading like the first chunk so you get used to all the characters and then jumping into the audiobook just because if you listen to the audiobook straight up you're gonna get confused and mix all the characters up it took me a while but i ended up getting the hang of it and the next book i read was also an agatha christie book and it's 450 from paddington um i dnf this one i didn't like it i don't know what it was about it maybe i just don't like miss marple but i didn't like it so i dnf'd it and my bookmark is still in here but yeah didn't really this one. 
The next book I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. Y'all already know what this one's about. I read it for 4.5 stars. We read it for my book club for July. I loved it. I listened to it on audiobook. It was so cute. January and just Gus. Ugh. I didn't even know until people pointed it out in my Discord that there are two different endings depending on how or where your edition was published, if it's the UK version or the US version. Apparently they have different endings. I like how it's kind of open-ended in that way, but yeah, that was that book. The next book I read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I didn't like this one as much as I liked Beach Read. Surprisingly, I think Christina Lauren just isn't an author for me. This is the best book that I've read from them so far, um, but I don't think I'm gonna be reading any more of their stuff just because I don't think that they're an author for me. They're authors for me. Christina Lauren, if you don't know, are two people. Um, they just write under one name. But I rated this one a three and a half just because I did feel a little underwhelmed. Um, the ending was a lot better than the first chunk of the book. I felt like Olive's character could have been more well developed. The next book I read was Confess by Colleen Hoover. This one was a 4.5 for me. I listened to this one on the plane to Connecticut and it was fantastic. Oh my gosh. This one follows a girl named Auburn and she decides to work for this artist dude who's super young actually. He's like a year or two older than her. His name is Owen and they end up developing feelings for each other. They go on a date, blah 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 blah. Things happen. Plot twists. Oh my gosh. This one is so good. Colleen Hoover does it again. The next book I read was Layla by Colleen Hoover. This one blew my mind. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on this book, but in my opinion, it's fantastic. 4.5 stars again. I was upset with leads at first, um, but then once we find out the things that happen and why they happen, I was like, oh, so you're not disgusting. <laughs> and the last book I read was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. I listened to this one on audiobook as well, and I read it 4.5. I think I'm gonna change it to a four stars though, now that I think about it. I really enjoy this book. I should have listened to this one on the plane because this one takes place in Connecticut too. And I was in Connecticut and coming back from Connecticut when I was supposed to read this, but I just ended up falling asleep and watching Love Island on the plane instead. So I didn't get to listen to this one, but I listened to it right when I got home and I was just like, oh, Hartford? Oh, they were just talking about Connecticut and like being on a plane and it was just the perfect vibe for when I was in Connecticut and I totally missed my window, but I still really enjoyed it. Lily is freaking insane, but I kind of love her. And the ending when, they, when her dad called her, I'm not gonna say what happened, but but those were all the books that I read this month. I have 11 here physically and then one that I DNF'd but I gave back to the store. And then for my TBR, I have a few books that I wanna read. Some of them are a higher priority than others. I'm just gonna get started. So the first book is actually our book pick for August for my book club. And it's The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The sequel is coming very soon. I think either this month or next month. So I wanted to pick this one. And this was the option that you guys voted for too. So I'm very excited to read this one. Some of you guys already finished it and you really enjoyed it so I'm even more excited to read it. This one is about a girl who inherits money from a man who passed away and he didn't pass down his inheritance to his children but to her and they're all kind of pissed and the only way she can get the money is if she lives in that house with all of his kids for like a year or something. I don't exactly know. I'm not 100% sure but that's what I know so far. The next book I want to read is Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This one I am going to be listening to as an audiobook. The audiobook so far is insane because it changes like for audio files and stuff. It's been interesting so far and I really like the first book. This is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I don't want to spoil much because it is a sequel so I won't explain what it's about. The next book I want to read I'm actually almost done with and it's Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. I'm trying to reread the series because um, I read it in high school and I didn't really enjoy it, but I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more now. Um, and I think it's because my mindset kind of changed since I started reading 
again. So I'm just gonna try to fly through these and see if I like them. The next book I wanted to read, I actually already finished, but I won't talk about it much. Um, but it's The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Place in Southern California where I'm from it's actually a little more south than me it's closer to like San Diego area it takes place in Oceanside if you know where that is but for all of you non Californians it's near San Diego and it deals a lot with like church relationships and just relationships with people is a very character driven story it's not solely about church but it ties in with it a lot and like purity culture a little bit. It deals with loss, it deals with childhood trauma, it deals with a lot of other things. Um, please read the trigger warning before you read this though. It was phenomenal. I loved it so much. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up though. And the next couple of books are going to be more like romancey because I'm trying to finish all of my summer romancy type of books before school starts. Um, but the first one is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. Everyone is raving about this one right now. It's so chunky. I just hauled it in my last video, so I don't want to talk about it much again. And the next book is Heart Bones by Colleen Hoover. Everyone's been raving about this one too. Another Colleen Hoover book I'm so excited to get through. And it's pretty short. I think it's less than 300 pages. Oh, it's just a little over 300 pages. Um, and this one I also talked about in my last video, so I don't want to repeat myself again. And then I have two more Colleen Hoover books, Regretting You. Again, I talked about it in my last video, and Ugly Love. I'm trying to get through all of her books right now, so um, I thought might as well just get them all done this month. The next book I want to read is Where the Crawdads Sing in preparation for the movie coming out soon. I think they're actually just filming it now. I don't know if it's coming soon soon. Maybe in like a year or two. But I want to read it now. Um, I have the audiobook on Libby. I'm really excited for this one, and it seems kind of like a summary type of book, so I do want to finish this one before summer ends. Then I also want to read 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand. The title is pretty straightforward because it's about 28 summers um, leading to present day, I think. I don't know much else about it other than that it's sad, so can't wait to read this one. I'm also still getting through A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, but you know, I feel like this one's going to be on my TBR for a while just because I want to get through it bit by bit. And then for my classic for this month, I want to read The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie, another Agatha Christie Poirot book. I am trying to get through all of her books, um, as I've said before, but yeah. And lastly, for my last audiobook, I want to read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've heard that this audiobook is fantastic, and again, I hauled this one in my last video, but it's about a girl named Daisy Jones and her band called The Six. So they're Daisy Jones and The Six all together, and it takes place in 1960s Hollywood, I think? Yes, late 60s, early 70s. Hollywood and it's written in interview form. So that's going to be very interesting to read. And that is everything I have to share with you guys today. Sorry I kind of rushed through this video, but um, I didn't really think that everything needed to be explained that much because I've kind of already talked about these books already. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Love you. Bye. Bye.